everyone welcome back uh just catching you back up where what's been going on here this uh video's back from the 13th of october i'm getting the uh jig stand for the fuel tanks uh, the second one i ran short of some material so i had to get back to the store and pick up a couple of two by threes get that finished and prep for the fuel tanks here um just kind of getting the parts sorted out here uh the the the, the ribs are a little bit different on the fuel tank and uh, you know they only go together in one order they had to get dimpled so uh, each one of those I sent over and spent some time dimpling and uh, then going through and peeling all the plastic off of all the parts uh, we had a we were dog sitting for a couple of days uh, it's Ergie in the background it's uh, just hanging out with me in the garage there and uh, for those of you who uh, are familiar with the uh, Aaron, he's got another Sting TSI that is currently in his 40-hour fly-off right now here in Colorado, and uh, he needs to get some of the Pro Seal uh, to touch up one of his fuel tanks. So he stopped by, and uh, just kind of catching him up on where I'm at with the project. I helped him a little bit towards the end of his project, getting the wings on, uh, just seeing what the other end of the project looks like. So it was kind of encouraging. Um, so they were heading out and my father-in-law stopped by because he was going to help a little bit that evening. Uh, this is the next day and uh, just getting some of the other parts prepped. Um, the edges on the longer pieces needed a little more uh, deburring. Uh, the edges were a little bit sharper there, but uh, the parts are still pretty clean for the most part, needing just some really minor um, cleanup on the, the edges. To get them all deburred and uh, you know just very pretty smooth to the touch. Uh, the instructions on this are a little difficult to determine which direction the the ribs go. Um, so I spent some time putting together and taking apart and putting together and taking apart these uh, uh, the fuel tank ribs and uh, had to sleep on it actually overnight to kind of figure it out. Uh, once I did get it figured out then it went together pretty good. Um, this section here is uh, just a picture of where all the dimples are going to be going and there's a lot of dimples on the fuel tank. There's actually fewer holes that aren't dimpled and uh, the, the skin is a little bit unwieldy to do without uh, an extra hand, at least the way I've got the, the dimpler set up. Um, so I did some here and then uh, again my father-in-law came over and he really worked pretty hard to uh, you know help me out with this he's uh 86 years old and um, very interested in the project so he's in been over helping when he can and uh this this actually kind of wore him out because there's just a lot of a lot of holes and just went next door and grabbed the other piece of skin that we needed to finish up because we wanted to get both of them done the same evening and uh it's just a different view here uh, this isn't the normal camera it's just the security camera in the garage and I can't get it to speed up quite as fast as the, the, the delayed one but this just gives you a different angle of the garage and we just basically move the the dimpler back and forth as we needed to to move up and down the the skin there and once that was done, then it was just a matter of going through and peeling all of the plastic off, or the, the protective piece of plastic. Uh, when I was doing it uh, in the evening, uh, the garage door closed because closed it was a little cool outside, and it actually helped out quite a bit because I could pull against the, the stop on the garage door. Um, and try to get those peeled off all in one piece. It seems to go a little bit faster when you use the uh, the... the the peeling process where it kind of builds its own rib or, or, or pull piece rather than peeling it off in lots of little chunks. So, um, and again, here I'm kind of working with trying to get the, the alignment of the ribs correctly. Uh, this is the, again, the next, the day after this. And, uh, since it got nicer out, um, had the garage door open and this is kind of fiddling back and forth with getting the, the ribs set up and things were still just not quite lining up just right. Um, lots of taking, putting together and taking apart. Eventually I figured it out and uh, the real trick on this is the end where the fuel center goes into, um, it has to be 
concave. And since I had the garage door open, I didn't have anything to push on from uh, when I was peeling the plastic on the other piece off. So when I flipped it over here, um, I actually used a couple of the openings where the rivets would go through and just screwed the, the top to the deck there and uh, gave it a nice, good, secure location for me to peel against. Um, let's see. So yeah, once we get that peeled off, then the next step is uh, start, you know, getting everything put together. Uh, we had to go get the wing together or wing over from our next door, and this ran into a problem. Um, if you note there where the arrow was at, um, when I put this together, I was going directly off of the the prints from the the, the shipment, and uh, because the fuel tank size had changed. Um, I did not need that extra rib in there, um, so I had to stop and take the rib out and um, just do a little fiddling there to get that all to fit. Uh, my next door neighbor uh, came over to help flip the wing over. This is where I'm clear drilling all the holes as per the instructions from uh, the video series that Evan or uh, yeah Evan put together. Um, one thing I'm doing here is I'm trying to scope out the wing a little bit. For whatever reason, the the leading edge of the rib was not aligning correctly with the um, the skin. And I don't know why it wasn't doing it, but uh, I thought I was going to have to put the wing or uh, pro seal the wing together at a little bit different. Um, but I finally sorted out how to do it without having to do it differently than what the uh, the build guide says, or at least the build video says. Um, but it's just a lot of putting this all together, um, clear drilling every single one of the holes, uh, then moving all the clicos and going about it again. Um, I wanted to mention that, uh, so my next door neighbor, you've seen him come over and the wings disappear and then they come back. And um, we've been really super fortunate because uh, our next door neighbors have uh, been gracious enough to let us store big chunks of this airplane in their garage. Uh, obviously, we don't have a, our vehicle in the garage, and it's sitting outside. But uh, you know, being able to just kind of carry over a large part and put it in their garage and um, carry it back over, and they've just given us carte blanche. So it's it's been very very helpful, and uh, we're amazingly fortunate from that. Um, I'm kind of fiddling with the uh, the lights. Uh, I'm slowly moving along with them. So having some problems with the uh, the the riv rib nut gun and I think I stripped out the threads on it so I had to get a new piece for that. So I'll come back around to that. And then I also realized that uh, I, the rivets holding the ribs on were not um, the same as the other one. So I was basically just chewing them up so that they match wing for wing. And uh, prepping here for the next fuel tank. I just added a bunch of the Clecos so that I, all I had to do is just move them over one rather than pick them out of my pocket or something like that. Um, so this is just the second wing, um, lots of the same thing where it's put the Clecos in, get it all lined up and then go through and clear drill it. Um, this took a, you know, a couple, couple hours to do. Um, and once you get one side done, it's just a whole lot easier to flip the wing. Uh, the one thing that's interesting is, is when you try to flip the wing, because of the, the weight of the wing and the orientation and just everything along with it, it's it's a little unwieldy to, to flip easily with the, the handholds that are on there. So I wound up actually buying a couple of those um, tubes that you see on some of the back of some of the smaller BMX bikes where you know people will put them on so that people can ride on the back standing up on the, the axle of a bicycle. I'm going to put those on see if those help for, for when we're flipping the wing. Um, so after I got all the clear drilling done, uh, it's time to clean up all the parts, get them prepped. Um, I did find a couple of other areas where I needed to deburr a little bit more because my hands were a little bit more directly on the, the, the center pieces. Um, I don't think it mattered too much, but I cleaned it up. This is just, I'm working on getting the, um, uh, fuel, uh, locations added on. I spent a couple of hours working on that um, and uh, looked really com complicated when I first started looking at it. But once I got all the parts together and started putting it together, it, it, start, it all started making sense. And it actually made 
sense on how the rib actually goes at that point in time. So that was uh, the fuel cinder end that I was working on, and then this is the uh, cap end that I'm working on here, and that's what that looks like. It's just got an, uh, an air vent at the top part, and then an overflow vent that goes out the bottom. Um, the one thing I am doing differently on this one is I am not using the, or I'm not planning on using the uh, fuel center that comes with the kit. Um, I'm going to be using the C's uh, fuel center and um, waiting on um, an, an actual bid or bill from them, and then I'll be ordering that to get that in. Um, so this is a uh, pro seal day for one of the wings. Uh, Lori and uh, my father-in-law Harold came over and we basically reviewed the video from uh, Evan and the, the sling factory on what we were going to be doing, how it went together, and uh, then worked on prepping the, the tank itself. So I just wanted to make sure everybody's on the same page because once we start the mixing process, uh, the clock starts and we've got about two hours to work with the material. Um, so we, you know, we all had to be working in, in sync with everybody. Um, you may notice out in the background there, we just cleared off the bench of all the empanage parts. So we moved those over to the neighbors because we needed the extra space. Um, because once we move the fuel tank over, then we clean off this bench here and then the wing comes on because as per the instructions, we want to make sure that when we rivet this together, we're riveting it together in place on the wing. So we're guaranteed to fit the fuel tank when we go to put it on for its final fitting. Um, there, there, I, I just need more counter space. So the, the storage that we were using for the empanage parts, um, went over into a little bit more storage area and um, I moved the, the camera a little bit so you could see what we were doing over there because we were much more involved with that and uh, let me tell you you go through a lot of gloves I thought I had enough and we actually depleted the box that I had here and uh, uh, Harold was able to bring over a box that he had and they kind of fit um, we made do with what we had we did pretty good for the most part um, and mixing the, the Pro Seal up definitely took some time as well. Um, and it takes a little bit, uh, I, I didn't get any sort of uh, like a caulk gun to to get it out there. So we just basically took a, the end of a hammer that fit inside the, the caulk section of it and just pressed it out. And it takes a fair amount of force to be able to get it to come out. Uh, so we're just laying the, the ribs inside the fuel tank there and um, kind of giving up some rough clecos. I didn't want to put a lot of clecos into the, the through the pro seal, but enough to be able to keep it square and, and keep it in position for when we carry it over and put it on the wing. And you can see we're just kind of all working in concert on this. Um, it took us about in, you know two to three hours of constantly moving to be able to get us you know in the position then, and everything riveted in. Um, I was pretty happy with how the Pro Seal worked. I mean, you could very clearly see where it pushed through the holes, and I feel like we've got some pretty good seals on it. Um, this is just one thing I don't want to have to do or follow up on when we get done. I want to make sure that we've got a good sealed tank um, because I feel like troubleshooting any leaks is going to be a bigger pain in the butt than. Um, just kind of covering all our bases here. So what we're doing is this is after we've riveted everything, we are going back through the entire uh, joint or the, all the joints throughout the entire ribs and skin connections and adding an extra little layer of pro seal to everything. So it looks, you know, adequately covered. Um, and this actually, I think, put, took more time than anything. Um, and you know just want to make sure we get it all covered because i just the, the leaks would just seem like crazy um you know following up while we're waiting on this uh i did get uh the torque tubes for the wings in uh just today and it's the 28th of october so i should be able to proceed with the uh the wing progress once the tanks are done um i have uh some i have a lot of the parts are currently in shipment 
and uh, I sat down with uh, uh, the airplane factory out in Torrance and um, got everything chewed up. I actually had a lot of the parts already delivered that I had. I, I've got a spreadsheet that I have independently of and I hadn't been keeping that up. Um, so I'm probably down to like four or five parts maybe that I still don't have, but nothing's holding me up at this point in time. Plenty of work ahead of us. So we'll see you next time.